fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Mmm, you're going to love the big exciting news today. Now there are two brand new Betty Crocker cake mixes. There's chocolate malt, and Peanut Delight. I'll bet you can hardly wait to try them. And I wouldn't blame you. They're just so good. Today, let me tell you about the chocolate malt. It's a wonderful new way to enjoy an old flavor that's a favorite with so many of us. There's honest-to-goodness delicious malted milk right in the mix. And, of course, there are all the other fine quality ingredients you choose yourself, like famous soft-to-silk cake flour and pure vegetable shortening. And because it is a Betty Crocker cake mix, Mom knows it's the easiest way ever to bake a perfect cake. So next time Mom goes shopping, be sure to remind her to get that brand new delicious treat, Betty Crocker's Chocolate Malt Cake Mix. You'll love it. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, Rita. I'll still A curious and expectant crowd had gathered at the small new depot in Silverton. Suddenly, as the distant sound of a whistle was heard, they waved their hats and cheered loudly. You're afraid to see it goes on. Yeah, but it should be. Yeah, but I don't savvy, Jim. Yesterday you told me to talk here. Let me get back to my office. I'll tell you all about it. Well, let's go. I've seen enough. A short time later, the two men, Luke and Jim, sat in the office of the James Melvin Freight and Stage Company. As Jim Melvin eased into the chair behind his desk, Luke looked at him searchingly. Well, what's this all about, Jim? At the employees' meeting you had yesterday, you told us the new railroad wouldn't affect business much. That's right, it did. We don't make any money on the stage run anyway. But my freight line made plenty, and I figured it still would. Well... The reason I figured that way was because old man Mason of the Mason Mining Company told me not to worry... He said his company would continue to have us haul ore and supplies between the mine and Lifton like always. Well, then why are you worrying? Well, because Mason came in last night and told me he was thinking about closing a deal with the railroad. Oh, so that's it, huh? Then all you'd get would be the hauling from the mine to here. And the railroad would take the ore from here to Lifton. Well, nope. we wouldn't even get that, Luke. The railroad's going to run a spur from here to the mine. Oh, now, maybe that's just talk. No, it isn't. They'd have a work training gang here tomorrow to lay the tracks to the mine. Hey, if the mining company gives them their haul, another business will follow. <laughs> Let me think things over, Jim. Maybe there is some way to show Mason the railroad isn't better. And if there is, I'm going to find it. It was late Friday afternoon when the Lone Ranger and Tottle rode along the old trail from Lifton to Silverton. 
They were about half the distance of the 30 miles between the two towns when they heard the distant whistle of a train. They reined to a halt. Oh, 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 The train from Lipton is coming through the canyon over there, Toto. We'll see it pass in a few minutes. Ah. It looked like other iron horse stopped on track and way a train. That not good? That's the work train from Silverton. It's waiting on a siding until the regular train passes. Oh, wait a minute. What you look at? Over there, see? Oh. Yeah, it looked like two men on horses. The armed work train. The work train is leaving. As soon as it passes, I'll get a look at those horsemen through my binoculars. Now I see them clearly. And what them look like? One's heavy set with iron gray hair. The other's a large man with a black mustache. He's pulling up the tracks toward the canyon. Here, take a look. Uh, 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 me see him clear now. And me know him if we meet him. They may be railroad men. Uh, them leave now. Ride to Silverton. We better be getting on, too, if we want to reach Silverton before sundown. Come on, Silverton. Come on, stop. Toto found a campsite near the trail just outside of town. While the masked man prepared the camp, Toto rode on into town for supplies. The sun was setting when he returned with news of interest. Oh, John. Oh, fella. Easy, stop. Easy, fella. It didn't take you long, Toto. Well, town not far. That Kimus Hobby. Yes? Me find out about two men we see watch trains at Sidon. Oh, what did you find out? A heavy set man with gray hair, him Jim Melvin. Him own freight and stage company. I see. Other fellow worked for Melvin. Him named Luke Jenkins. Melvin not like railroad coming to Silverton. I understand that. He's bound to lose a lot of business between Lipton and Silverton. I'd uh, like to know more about Jim Melvin. After dark, I'll put on a disguise and we'll ride into town. <laughs> That evening, Jim Melvin was alone in his office when the Lone Ranger, disguised as a rancher, entered. Good evening. Well, good evening, stranger. Do something for you? I, uh, came to get some information about your freight line, Mr. Melvin. Sit down, sit down. Thank you. I suppose you got some hauling to do, eh? I might have. I'd like to get your rates to compare with those offered by the railroad. Right. Now the train's coming to town from Lipton, I, uh... That's railroad... Uh, Let me tell you something, mister. Nothing's going to take the place of horsepower. When I take a job, you can be sure your stuff is going through. Wouldn't shipping by railroad be quicker and cheaper? Well, I admit I can't match their rates. Oh, then the railroad is cheaper. It, it wouldn't be quicker or cheaper if your shipment didn't get there. Our freight lines proved it can get stuff through safe and on time. But the railroad hasn't proved itself yet. I'll still take a chance on the railroad. Sure. But if you decided to come back to me... You'll find the rates are going up. Don't forget that either. Hey, Jim, I brought Jack over. Shut up, Luke. Uh, we didn't notice your company, Jim. I, I was just leaving. Good night, Mr. Melvin. Hey, who's that on there? Yeah, who do you think it was? Another fool who's decided to use a railroad. Yeah, he'll be back. You told me about the plans you made. When we get through with that railroad, they won't ever get any hauling business again. That's right, they won't. Uh, you going along with Jack and me tomorrow, Jim? No, you two can handle the job. And make sure you do it upright. Why don't you come along? Well, my sister Jessica, the only living relative I have, is coming over on the stage from Lipton tomorrow. i got to be here to meet her. It's uh, better anyway for me to be around town when folks get the news of what's happened. Yeah, I guess that's right, Jim. Well, after tomorrow, we won't have to worry. The Melvin Freight and Stage Company will have all the business it can handle. Meantime, the lone ranger walked to the edge of town where Toto waited in the shadows with the horses. That's you, Kimasabi? Yes, I just came from Melvin's office. Now, what did you find out? He's very bitter about the railroad. Oh. Just before I left, two of his men came in. One of them started to say something about a plan, but Melvin shut him up. Almost too quickly, it seemed to me. 
You think them have plan against the railroad? We'll check in town for further information. And we'll leave the horses here. Come on. Nothing more was learned that night. But the next morning, one of Jim Melvin's men entered the freight company's office. Well, what do you want for it? The man down at the depot asked me to bring this to you, boss. The telegram for me? Uh-huh. He went with the wires all the way from Lipton. I was there when it was sticking out. So he gave it to me. Uh, yeah, it is, just like he gave it to me. Yeah, it must be for my sister. I guess she's not taking the stage today. Let's see. Decided to try the new, new railroad train this afternoon. Meet me at the depot, Jessica. Great guns. What's the matter, boss? Don't you like Chris, it? Chris, we got to keep that work train from leaving town. The work train's already gone. I watched it pull out. Something wrong? Yeah, boss. plenty. Stay here at the office. I'm leaving. If I don't get to that shed before that work train leaves, my sister's going to be in a big train wreck. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, all you, all you're doing is a question. And here's one that I've got that these people have to say. Oh, we can do, 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 do an okay. Okay. Doing okay? You bet the champs in good old New York are. Listen, now in New York, we wait for days to see a guy called Willie Mays. Because Wheaties keeps him leaping high to grab those line drives on the fly. And Yogi Berra's a Wheaties lad whose batting style makes pitchers sad. No matter how they throw the ball, that Yogi belts it through the wall. And look, both Willie Mays and Yogi Berra turn to Wheaties for extra energy because there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be doing an okay. Okay. To continue, the Lone Ranger had saddled Silver in preparation for the trip to town with Toto. Suddenly, they heard pounding hoofbeats approaching from the direction of town on the trail above them. Some right up trail in big hurry, Kimisabi. Most people use a new trail along the railroad when riding to Lipton. This old trail, shorter. No. Whoever that is, he won't see our camp from the trail. He's passing. I wonder who that... His horse is falling, Toto. Come on. Uh-huh. Well, the horse is all right. That fellow on ground. Him hurt. Boy, it's Jim Melvin. Now, we'll have a look at it. My shirt, No, we're not outlaws. Forget the mask. You have a bad sprain here. Uh, I got to ride on it. Easy there, easy. A horse stepped into a hole. I have to get to the railroad side. I have to, do you hear? You're not able to ride. Ankle plenty bad. Why do you have to go to the siding, Melvin? You, you, you know me, that, that voice. Are you a Mr. Jones? That's it, you're the man who came... I came to your office in disguise. Now answer my question. Why the hurry to reach the siding? My only sister. She's coming on the afternoon train. She'll be killed. Talk sense, Melvin. Get to the point. All right, I got to tell you, I guess. Get to the shed. Stop Luke and Jack from sending the work train down the track in the path of the train. They went to the shed. Going to wait for the work train. Put bandanas over their faces. Hold up the engineer and fireman. Then what? They'll start the work train, send it into the path of the oncoming afternoon train. There'll be a big wreck. So that was your plan. Yeah, right? yeah, get to them, stuff them. My sister's on that train. I just got word. Others are on that train, too, Melvin. Otto, getting back to town, take him to the sheriff. Uh, you do it. I'll tell the sheriff everything. Hurry, you got to stop I'll them. do my best. You'll have to take the consequences later, Melvin. Easy, steady, big fella. Come <laughs> to go, the Lone Ranger gave Silver his head, and the great white stallion, sensing the urgency of the moment, responded gallantly to the ringing cry of his master. Oh, Silver! Master, boy! Master! Later, after hunting their horses behind some big boulders nearby, 
Jack and Luke crouched behind some tall bushes near the siding and waited until the work train had rolled to a stop. Cover your face so they won't know you next time. I'm ready. Go ahead. That engineer probably don't see us yet. All right, here we are. I'll get your gun ready. All right, you two come down out of that engine. What the hell? It's a couple of owl hoots. You're coming down or do you want lead? Huh? Oh, we're we're coming down. What's the idea? We haven't got anything. And the two flat cars are empty. Shut up. Go on, Luke. Now watch these two hombres. What are you up to, anyway? You just watch and see. Pull the lever way back, then jump for it. Hey, that'll start the train. Send it into the one that's due to be coming from Lipton. <laughs> that's the idea, mister. A nice big wreck. We won't let you. I warned you. Oh, my leg. Just so your friend won't interfere. No. Oh. Now go ahead, Luke. Hurry up. Here she goes. Jump, Luke. Jump. Yeah, matey. There goes the work train. <laughs> it sure will be a big wreck when those planes meet head on. That's right. I'd like to be watching with... Hey, Jack, look. Somebody on the trail. Step behind the bushes, quick. Hey, look. A mast hombre. Yeah, and he's chasing after the work train. Hey, looks like that mast hombre's trying to spoil our planes. Oh, forget it. He hasn't got a chance. All right, let's get away from here and head back to town. Meantime, as he raced after the work train, the Lone Ranger knew that seconds counted that he was to prevent a disaster. He urged the great horse Silver to further effort. Come on, Silver! Faster, big fellow, faster! Slowly, seemingly inch by inch, Silver lessened the distance between them and the train. Just a little further, boy. Careful, Silver! Slowly they came, until Silver was racing near the iron rungs of the last flat car. Then the Lone Ranger braced himself for the leap which he dared not miss. Isn't it, Silver? Heavy big fella! Quickly, the masked man moved along the swaying cars and over the fuel tender into the engine cab. <laughs> he grasped the throttle and pulled it back, then reached for the brake lever. To push that lever and put on the brakes. The other train. I must stop the work train and put it into reverse. One of the passenger cars of the train from Lipton, Jim Melvin's sister Jessica was enjoying her first train ride when the conductor stopped at her seat. Soon we'll meet the work train to side just beyond the canyon. Uh, you can see Miss Winder where the rats enter the canyon yonder. Yes, yes, that's right. I why I look another train and it's coming this way. Yes, the only thing. The work train. It didn't wait at the site. We're going to smack into it. We can't stop in time. The engineer sees him. We'll all be killed. of the work engine, the Lone Ranger had tried practically to move the brake lever, which had jammed because of the strong and sudden shove given it by Luke when he released it. The work train had run through the short canyon and out onto the curving track beyond before the lever responded. There, that did it. Train from Lipton. He can't stop in time. I'll try to get this train reversed and pass. For a 
few moments, it seemed that in spite of the Lone Ranger's efforts, the trains would crash before the work train could gather enough reverse speed. The masked man held his breath as the engine of the passenger train came close. Then gradually, the work train gathered speed enough to run ahead until the other train could come to a stop. Back to the siding when the Lone Ranger brought the work train to a standstill. As the Lone Ranger swung down from the engine cab, the passenger train slowly approached and stopped. He was soon surrounded by a relieved but angry crowd. A masked owl hoop was running that train. We ought to string him up right now. He almost caused a wreck. Stand back. I don't expect thanks. I do expect a chance to prove what I say. I Here comes the sheriff and his men from town. Now you'll have your proof. You all right, Chief Masabi? Yes, Otto. I see you found silver. Uh-huh. Listen, it's a miracle you got that work train stopped. We picked up the two men who started that work engine down the tracks. Now, where are they now? I sent a deputy back to town. Now that you're here to take charge, Sheriff, we'll leave. One day, perhaps, we'll meet again. You ready, Cotto? Uh-huh. Ready. Ready, big fella. Oh, sir! Then that masked man wasn't to blame at all, was he, sir? Nope. He risked his life to save all of you. If it hadn't been for him, there'd have been a big wreck. Hey, sir, who was that masked man? The masked man? Yeah. Huh. You can thank your lucky stars he was around when this began to happen, Conductor. He's the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? What's that? of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boyd. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.